Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 5. Jesse Jane, a prominent figure in the adult film industry, passed away at the age of 43 in Oklahoma. The cause of her death, believed to be a drug overdose, is under investigation. Found alongside her boyfriend, Brett Hazenmuller, at a residence in Moore, Oklahoma, her passing marks the end of a dynamic and influential career in the adult film world. Born Cynthia Ann Howell on July 16, 1980, in Fort Worth, Texas, Jessie Jane grew up in the Oklahoma City area. A high school graduate with honors from Moore High School, she initially pursued a career in modeling, working for retailers and later with Hooters, where she became a regional training coordinator. Transitioning to full-time bikini modeling for Hawaiian Tropic, she eventually entered the adult film industry. In 2003, Jane signed with Digital Playground, a prominent porn studio, marking her debut in the film Beat the Devil. She became a defining star of the early 2000s, a period when the internet drastically reshaped the adult film industry. Her enthusiastic approach extended beyond performing to include active promotion, earning her widespread recognition and awards. Jane's most notable work was in the Pirates movie series, where she played a key role. These films, especially known for their high budgets in the adult film industry, solidified her status as a leading figure. She also made appearances in mainstream productions, including the 2004 movie Starsky and Hutch and the HBO series Entourage, showcasing her crossover appeal. Throughout her career, Jessie Jane adapted to the changing landscape of the industry, including modifying her appearance to suit high-definition filming and eventually venturing into creating her own line of sex toys. Despite retiring from the industry in 2007, she remained a notable figure and often spoke candidly about the changes and challenges within the adult film world. Jessie Jane is remembered for her dynamic presence both on and off camera, her commitment to engaging with her fans, and her influence in an era when adult film stars held significant celebrity status. A full list of survivors was not immediately available, but her legacy in the industry and beyond remains significant. Number 4. Bill Hayes, the beloved actor and singer, passed away at the age of 98 in his home in Studio City, California. His death was confirmed by his wife and longtime co-star, Susan Seaforth Hayes. Hayes was renowned for his portrayal of Doug Williams on the iconic NBC soap opera, Days of Our Lives, a role he embodied for over five decades, amassing an impressive 2,141 episodes. His character, initially a suave con artist, evolved into a community pillar, captivating audiences with complex plot twists and romantic escapades. Born William Foster Hayes III on June 5, 1925, in Harvey, Illinois, Hayes nurtured a passion for singing from a young age. After serving as a fighter pilot trainee in the Navy during World War II, he pursued a degree in liberal arts and a master's in music. His show business career took off with roles in musicals like Carousel and Me and Juliet, and a television debut on NBC's Fireball Fun for All. Hayes's breakthrough in music came with the 1955 hit single, The Ballad of Davy Crockett, which rode the wave of the Disney's Davy Crockett craze. This single topped charts for five weeks, becoming a part of the cultural zeitgeist of the baby boom generation. His role on Days of Our Lives began in 1970, where he met Susan Seaforth, who played Julie Olson. Their on-screen romance blossomed into real-life marriage in 1974, mirroring their characters' nuptials two years later. This power couple even graced the cover of Time magazine in 1976, highlighting their significant impact on daytime television. Bill Hayes's legacy extends beyond his professional achievements. He was a loving father to Carolyn Huff, Margaret Jackson, Thomas, and William Foster Hayes IV. He also leaves behind 13 grandchildren and 30 great-grandchildren. His daughter Catherine predeceased him in 2010, 
Hayes's final appearance alongside his wife on Days of Our Lives encapsulates their enduring love, both on and off the screen. His remarkable career and personal life leave an indelible mark on the entertainment industry and the hearts of those who knew him. Number 3. Dexter Scott King, the younger son of civil rights icon Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., passed away at the age of 62 in his home in Malibu, California. The cause of death was prostate cancer, as confirmed by the King Center for Nonviolent Social Change in Atlanta. Dexter King played a significant role in preserving and managing his father's legacy, serving as the longtime chairman of the King Center and the president of the King Estate. Born on January 30, 1961 in Atlanta, Dexter was just seven years old when his father was assassinated in 1968. His mother, Coretta Scott King, founded the King Center the same year to continue Dr. King's vision. Dexter took over leadership of the center in 1989, following his mother. His tenure saw various controversies and legal disputes, often involving his siblings, Martin Luther King III and Bernice King, over control and representation of their father's legacy. Dexter King's management of the King Center and the King Estate was sometimes criticized for being commercially driven. Notably, he led a lawsuit against CBS News over the use of Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, resulting in a settlement. His leadership also saw financial challenges and organizational restructuring within the King Center. The King siblings' relationship was complex, marked by legal battles and public disagreements. Despite these conflicts, Dexter's commitment to his father's memory remained evident. He authored Growing Up King, an intimate memoir, offering a personal perspective on his life and the impact of his father's legacy. Dexter pursued a career in the film industry, moving to California in 2000 and stepping down from his role at the King Center in 2003. He portrayed his father in the TV movie, The Rosa Parks Story. Unlike his siblings, who embraced roles as civil rights leaders, Dexter saw his path differently, focusing on film and creative projects. He is survived by his wife, Leah Weber, his brother Martin, and his sister, Bernice. His older sister, Yolanda King, passed away in 2007. Dexter King's life reflects a journey shaped by the immense legacy of his father and the complexities of managing such a significant historical and cultural heritage. Number 2. Gary Graham, an actor renowned for his roles in the science fiction realms of Alien Nation and Star Trek Enterprise, passed away at his home in Spokane Valley, Washington at the age of 73. His wife, Becky Graham, confirmed his death due to cardiac arrest. Graham, born on June 7, 1950, in Long Beach, California, initially pursued pre-med studies at the University of California, Irvine. His foray into acting began in 1976 with a part in the Western series The Quest. This debut led to numerous appearances in popular television shows like Starsky and Hutch, The Incredible Hulk, and The Dukes of Hazard. Graham's most recognized role came with the Alien Nation franchise, which started as a 1988 film and was later adapted into a Fox television series in 1989. In the series, he portrayed Detective Matthew Sykes, a character originally played by James Caan in the film. The show, depicting extraterrestrials trying to assimilate in Los Angeles, was short-lived but spawned several TV movies, including Alien Nation, Dark Horizon, and Alien Nation, Body and Soul. Another significant role in Graham's career was as Ambassador Sovel, a Vulcan in the series Star Trek Enterprise. His portrayal of the emotionally restrained and logic-driven Vulcan was a testament to his acting prowess. Graham had previously appeared in the Star Trek universe in Star Trek Voyager as Tanis, a member of the Okampa species. Post-Enterprise, Graham engaged with the Star Trek community through fan-produced projects, such as the 2007 film Star Trek of Gods and Men. Gary Rand Graham is survived by his daughter, Haley Graham, from his marriage to Susan Lavelle, his sisters, Colleen Bertucci and Janine Michelle Graham, and two stepchildren from his marriage to Becky Graham, Scott and Steve Deere. His previous marriages to Susan Lavelle and Diane Graham had ended in divorce. Graham's contribution to the science fiction genre, particularly his memorable performances in Alien Nation and Star Trek, leaves a lasting impact on fans and the industry alike.
Number 1. Dan Wagner, an influential figure in modern dance, passed away at the age of 91 in a nursing home in Oakland, Maryland. His sister, Hannah Sinsel, confirmed his passing. Wagner, who hailed from small-town Appalachia, made a significant mark in New York City's dance scene from the late 1950s. His journey in dance began with Martha Graham Dance Company, where he performed from 1957 to 1962, and again briefly in 1968. He was also an early member of the Paul Taylor Dance Company, dancing there from 1960 to 1968. In 1969, Wagner established his own group, Dan Wagner and Dancers, leading it for 25 years. Renowned for his unique choreography, Wagner was celebrated for blending influences from Graham, Taylor, and Merce Cunningham. Critics admired his work for its quirky invention, energy, and the fun element in it. His dance style was described as stalwart, with a focus on tongue-twister coordinations. His thematic work often drew on his Appalachian upbringing, with pieces like Dan's Run Penny Supper, Summer Rambo, and A Dance for Grace and Elwood, reflecting his roots. Wagner's career also included teaching roles at various prestigious institutions, including the University of California, Los Angeles, Connecticut College, and Florida State University. His approach to dance was deeply philosophical, believing in the healing power of dance and its ability to bring alignment and peace. Born on July 13, 1932, in Springfield, West Virginia, Wagner's early life in a rural setting heavily influenced his artistic work. He initially enrolled in a pharmacy program at West Virginia University, but his passion for dance led him to join the Orchesis Dance Society and eventually to New York, where he pursued a full-time dance career. Wagner's legacy in the dance world is marked by his unique blend of Appalachian heritage with modern dance forms, his contribution as a performer and choreographer, and his influential role as an educator. He is survived by his sister, Hannah Sincel, brother Loy, and another sister, Martha McLaughlin. Wagoner's life story reflects a journey from humble beginnings to becoming a revered figure in American modern dance. 